a keyboard that you need no tools to take apart. This is supposed to be a keyboard that's supposed to let you do that. So this is the Keyboom Moonshadow. It's a CNC via mechanical keyboard. CNC, probably aluminum. Via means it's compatible with software that makes it easy to program. And mechanical keyboard, we all know what that is. It's a 75% keyboard and then maybe have a little screen. Finally, something with no knobs. Other than that, there's not much on the box. There's this patent tenon, tenon and mortis structure. Mortis sounds like, you know, in those mystery shows where someone gets murdered and there's rigor mortis in the body. Maybe that's what that is. No, that makes no sense. Their mascot is pretty cute though. But Key Boom, I've heard this name before. I remember watching it on a YouTube video and being like, hmm, that looks like a pretty good keyboard. Also, thanks to Key Boom for sponsoring this video and sending us over this keyboard. Sponsors like them let us make content like this at no cost to you. You've got a manual. It's a fairly short manual, but I'm glad it has one. It's really heavy at 2000 grams. That is a heavy keyboard. Got RGB effects, hot swap, works with Windows and Mac. It's VIA compatible, so you can just do it on your browser. You don't really even need to download software if you didn't want to. You also get this gigantic cloth. That's a good working station or in case it's dirty, you know, do a little wipey, wipey, wipey. You've got some tools and we've got a white braided USB-C cable, not coiled or anything, which I appreciate. Coil cables are very 2020, straight cables, classic, timeless. Although it's a bare bones kit, you get two switches, key boom switches. They're five pin, they're linear and prelude. So I'm not sure why they gave me these other than to try them out, but it also makes no sense because if I'm buying a keyboard kit, I'm also buying switches and keycaps at the same time. I'm not going to wait till I receive the kit, try out their two switches and be like, oh, now I need switches. So these are nice, but they are sort of useless. Then you get this switch puller and then a cute little baby keycap puller. Those are our tools. You don't need an Allen wrench. You don't need a Phillips screwdriver because it has secret techniques to be able to take apart the case and put it back on. Also, it's pretty much screwless. I guess there's one, two, three, and four connecting the plate to the PCB. And other than that, the case itself has no screws. Got USB-C port in the middle. Not sure what these two things are, but they look a little funky. And then key boom here looks nice. It's very different from the Phantom 81 that had a completely see-through plastic case. This one is a white aluminum case. On the top, you've got no knob, no badge, no screen. Nope, it's just a colored block. I wonder if you can take that off and just put a switch there instead because this offers no function, no purpose. And we also see that we got lots of flexi cuts here in this polycarbonate plate. Very flexible, gasket mounted. You got screw-in stabilizers here at the bottom, a layer of silicone between your plate and PCB. And then a sheet here that's also silicone, although maybe it's some kind of PE foam and pre-lubed stabilizers. So all very good things. Let's figure out how to open it so that we can then explore the innards and build it. I believe that has something to do with these two plastic pieces. We're just gonna play around and see what happens. Maybe you can move it. There we go. Just push each side and pull them out. So these two pieces are plastic in an all aluminum case. So if anything breaks, it's gonna be these two pieces over time and they seem to be very specialized pieces. Maybe if you had 3D printing skills, you could copy this and remake it again. But plastic pieces could be breakable. Ooh, this is nice. You can unscrew this bad boy. So I think I will just because there's no reason for it and the PCB underneath does have a socket <laughs> to use it with That's cool. So we've got this entire structure here made of silicone and it goes around the plate It goes around the PCB. It's just one massive piece of silicone. We've got your plate Gaskets are glued on it looks like and then we've got our case foam on the bottom I actually can't remove this inner piece unless I unscrewed your stabilizer Overall, very simple structure and super easy to take apart. You do need a Phillips screwdriver if you want to unscrew this part. And then if you want to unscrew your stabilizer,
appetizers. And now time for the good part, the building part. Got Kibu Matcha Latte, which is sort of matches the matcha of the stabilizers. And I've really been digging matcha lately. I actually bought my own kit to do a DIY matcha at home, just to be a little bougie, you know, explore things other than just coffee. These boxes are nice. They're magnetic. You just open, close, open, close. So matcha latte switches, five pin, cherry MX style design, key boom branding on the top. They're pre-lube linears. They sound pretty good out of the keyboard, but we'll see what they sound like inside of the keyboard. And digging the gaskets, very nice. Bare bones kits are becoming a lot more common. I think they're gonna sell this in stock. If not, they probably have it in stock already. We don't have to go into a group buy, be scared that we're gonna get scammed, but instead you just buy it, it ships to your door and that's it. That is the entire process. Judging from the LEDs on the PCB, I mean, you've probably got some pretty sick RGB, although these switches are gonna impede on that RGB a lot. Do you like RGB? Do you not like RGB? I like it in minimal amounts, but not crazy. I really match with the matcha green stabilizers. That's nice. And for keycaps today, I'm going with something that's supposed to be super duper thocky. These are the Sarah Key ceramic keycaps. Really heavy for keycaps. You can hear them shaking around in there. So this is gonna be the bomb. This is all gonna be awesome. They feel a lot like Mahjong pieces. The font on them looks pretty good. This is cool. This is different. This is unique. The space bar key is probably the most important one. It really makes clinky sounds if you touch them to each other. Or if you had like really long nails and you typed on them, that might sound annoying. This is so satisfying. Listen to this. What a nice sound. Oh, okay. This is the keyboard build. Now it's ultra heavy with everything in it finally. I just want to hear how it sounds. Oh yeah. <laughs> Oh no, the bottom row scratches the case. That's problematic. Just just don't do this. Ooh, look at that. So <laughs> the ceramic keycaps are a little bit see-through on the bottom. Got this black color that you can get. You even got a purpley color. It looks gray though. And you got a green color. This is more of a forest green. This one actually looks really freaking good to me. It uses mortise tenon technology. It's a technique of woodworking where the joints are connected at right angles. It's been utilized for thousands of years. So I'm assuming that's what these joints are. See, I knew they recommended see-through switches and see-through keycaps. I just don't really like that. Look. So it's a PC plate, it's gasket mounted, flexible. I agree with that. These Sergi keycaps, they're going for about $150. They have round two right now. So there's this color, white and indigo, and white and canal blue. And then if you wanted to try it, they do sell a four piece pack. Cool touch, perfect for the summer <laughs> where things are a little bit hotter. Key boom matcha latte switches are $16 for 35 linears. And because we had three boxes, that added about $48. And with those keycaps, I mean, we're looking at, we're looking at about $400 for this thing that I built fully. You could opt for cheaper switches. You could opt for much more affordable keycaps, but the base kit itself is still gonna be $200. I'm gonna just a little pricey on that. The Notion database. I have the key, dude. Moon shadow price. Oh, that's a problem. So overall, four stars because I have this problem. Oh, I suppose I might not have put it in all the way or maybe the switch was malfunctioning, but it's working fine now. Wow, great. From four stars to, is it worth five? It's really nice. It doesn't have a ton of extra features. I think you get what you pay for, but maybe you can find something more affordable. You know, I'm still gonna keep it at four stars. If I could do like 4.25, maybe I'd do that. But four stars is where we're at now. And we'll do a real typing test. Pretty fast, 142. Good job, me. If you do enjoy this sort of plug and play kind of style, sure, 199 is definitely on the pricier side compared to other keyboards such as Keychron, like the Q1 Pro, you're still really competing for that price point there. I think the tune stabilizers are really nice and the color options are really nice, but it does miss out on, you know, just like that extra oomph. Maybe the extra oomph is being able to take it apart without using any tools. I don't know if that's enough of an extra oomph for me. 
but maybe it is for you so let me know down below and as always thanks so much for watching and thanks to Cuban for sponsoring this video bye